My name is Precious and I am a food and lifestyle blogger at PreciousCorner.com. Today I am making easy homemade bread. Anyone, and I mean anyone, can make this basic bread. It's a great bread recipe for beginners and it yields bread that is soft, fluffy and simply to die for. Okay, let's get started. Pour two cups of lukewarm water into a large bowl. You want to make sure the water is not hot or cold. It should just be slightly warm to the touch. To the lukewarm water, add a tablespoon of active dry or instant yeast. Stir everything to combine. Then let it rest for 5 to 10 minutes until the yeast is creamy and or bubbly on top. Add in a quarter cup of granulated or cane sugar. A quarter cup of vegetable oil, canola oil, any oil you have. Then add in 6 cups of bread flour or all-purpose flour. Add in 2 teaspoons of salt. Then add in a quarter teaspoon of freshly grated or ground nutmeg. The nutmeg is optional but I love adding in a little bit of nutmeg because it takes the flavor up a notch. Mix everything together with a wooden spoon then pour everything onto a clean working surface and knead to combine. I just love the process of kneading dough. I find it really relaxing and therapeutic. Now if your dough is turning out too hard, sprinkle on just a little bit of water because you don't want this dough too hard. Knead for 5 minutes. Then you form the dough on into a ball. Generously oil a large bowl. You want to make sure you oil the bowl so that the dough is not going to stick to the bowl. And then you put in the dough and you want to make sure that you oil all around the dough so that it doesn't stick to the plastic wrap that we are going to put on top of it. Cover the dough with plastic wrap and keep in a warm place to rise. To create a warm atmosphere for my dough to rise, I love to turn on my oven for one minute, then turn it off. That creates a warm atmosphere that makes dough to rise perfectly. I have used this method for years and it is so effective. Just make sure your oven doesn't get hot but slightly warm. Let the dough rise for one hour, then you take it out. Punch the dough to deflate it. This process, you guys, is one of my favorite things about making dough. I don't know, I just find it so, so relaxing. So once you have deflated that dough, divide it into two equal portions. I just weigh the dough with my hands to make sure that they are about two equal portions. Generously grease two 9 by 5 inch loaf pans. Then shape the dough and put it back into the prepared loaf pans. For shaping the dough, I just take one portion of it and I divide it into three equal portions and I make ovals out of that. Then I put it in my loaf pan. This is just a really fun way I love doing my loaves. Then for the other loaf, it's just going to be the traditional um, one loaf. So roll it out and then you roll it into a log, tuck in the edges and put it in the loaf pan. Let the dough rise again for about 20 minutes. It's going to rise up and fill the pan. Once the dough has risen, it is time to bake. Bake in a preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is equal to 180 degrees Celsius. Bake for 30 to 35 minutes until golden brown on top. If the bread starts to get brown too fast, just loosely cover with aluminium foil. Take it out, let it cool for a little bit, then you can dig in. You know, warm bread is just phenomenal, you guys. So I insist, you have to try this bread 
while it is so warm there is nothing like fresh warm homemade bread with some butter just melting into that bread oh my goodness so good This is epicness. <laughs> this is so good. It is so soft, so fluffy, just so delicious. Oh my god, you won't believe this is homemade. Okay, friends, that's how you make easy homemade bread. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it inspired you. If you liked the video, click on the like button. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you've not subscribed already. When you subscribe, Click on the notification bell so you can get notified whenever I post a new video. For the full homemade bread recipe, go to my blog, PreciousCore.com. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'm going to see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye. Now I have some bread to attend to. Ah. Hi, my name is Precious and today I'm going to show you guys how to make delicious, easy, homemade French bread. One of my favorite things to do is make bread at home and I'm so excited about this video because if you've never made bread before, don't be intimidated. Making homemade bread is so easy, you won't even believe it. Just a few simple ingredients and you're onto something great. The first thing you want to do is pour two and a half cups of lukewarm water into a large bowl. To the water add four and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast or instant yeast. Then equally add a quarter cup of sugar, granulated sugar or brown sugar is fine. Add a tablespoon of salt and a tablespoon of vegetable oil. Then add in six cups of all-purpose flour or bread flour. I'm using bread flour here but all-purpose flour will work just fine. Now use a wooden spoon to mix everything together. It's not going to come together quite nicely but don't worry we are going to knead this after we mix with a wooden spoon. If your mixture feels dry sprinkle on a little bit of lukewarm water then transfer all of the mixture onto a clean working surface. Knead the dough for about 5 minutes until the dough is smooth. This is going to take a while so just take your time and work on that dough and enjoy it. I find this process very therapeutic. I don't know why <laughs> but just enjoy it. But you guys if you have a standing mixer or is it a stand-up mixer you could definitely use that as well. You don't have to do this by hand. Now form that dough into a ball, then oil a large bowl or you can just spray the bowl with oil. Then put the dough into the bowl. Make sure that that oil coats all of the dough. Cover with a clean kitchen cloth or with plastic wrap and then you keep it in a warm place to rise for about one to two hours or until doubled in size. I put that in my oven but note that my oven is turned off. I turned it on just for a few minutes so it could get lightly warm then i put it in there to rise while the dough is rising prepare two large baking sheets by lining them with parchment or baking paper and i'm also getting myself a drink because why not <laughs> now my dough is risen it's been in there for about an hour and it's risen beautifully punch the dough to deflate take out that air you can see how beautiful that dough looks. Then transfer the dough onto a floured surface. Now cut the dough into four equal pieces. I'm using my kitchen scale 
to measure the pieces to make sure that they are about the same size but you don't have to do this you could just weigh them with your hands and see how you know the feel you want to make sure that you have about four equal portions of the dough now take each portion and form a log and the way i like to do this is by just spreading it first with my hands then going in with a small rolling pin and rolling it out then i'll use my hands to roll it up into a log and then i'm going to just keep rolling it with my hands so make it longer and you'll see what i mean Once you formed your log, place it on the prepared baking sheet. And just repeat the process with the other portions of the dough. Now we are going to make diagonal cuts on each of these logs and you want to make about four to five or six diagonal cuts on each log now we are going to let the rolls rise so let them rise again for about 20 minutes then we are ready to bake bake at 350 degrees fahrenheit for about 25 minutes and i used both of my ovens because i have two large pans here or two large baking sheets here and they couldn't fit into one oven what you could do is keep half of the dough in your fridge bake one first then you bring out the other and bake so it doesn't rise out of proportion as soon as the loaves are out of the oven brush them with a tablespoon of melted butter and friends this is our bread look at how beautiful they are my loaves are ready now the real problem is waiting for these bad boys to cool down so i can dig into them i have some butter here that good kind of butter you know okay so obviously i can't wait any longer they are nice and warm and by the way warm bread freshly baked bread is to die for so when i bake bread i always have to try warm because it's phenomenal it's heavenly I just love looking at butter melt into warm, freshly baked bread. My mouth is watering. Oh my. Mm. Simply phenomenal, you guys. I love the saltiness of the bread. It's nice and soft. A little crust on the outside. It's simply to die for. Okay, friends, that's how you make phenomenal, easy, homemade French bread. I hope you guys enjoyed watching my video. If you liked the video, click on the like button. Also, for the full recipe, go to my blog, freshescore.com. I'm going to leave a link in the description box of the video. If you've not subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click that subscribe button and also click on the notification bell so you can get notified whenever I post a new video. Okay, friends, I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. Hi guys, I'm Precious and you're welcome to my kitchen. In this episode of Precious Kitchen, I'll be showing you guys my recipe for homemade meal bread. Let me just say that I've been waiting for this day, the day I show you guys my feel-proof meal bread recipe in cameroon where i come from one of my favorite breads to eat is the pangole 
in French it's called pain au lait. in English it's called milk bread which is sold at the bakeries when I moved to the United States I really wanted to enjoy pain au lait, but I couldn't find it yet so I started testing and trying to make mine and I'm proud to say that I came up with what has been like the one of the most popular recipes on my blog my very own recipe for homemade pain au lait. it is soft fluffy milky my mouth waters just talking about it i cannot wait to show you guys let's go over the ingredients we need and then we can start cooking so for your homemade milk bread you need three cups of all-purpose flour that's equal to 375 grams then you also need a quarter cup of evaporated milk now i love using evaporated milk because it has this really rich deep milky flavor so so good I have some extra flour here, about half a cup for dusting when we finally roll out our bread. Then I have a cup of warm water to prove the yeast. It should just be um, slightly warm to the touch, not too hot, not too cold. If you want to use a thermometer, it should be about 110 degrees um, Fahrenheit warm. Right here, I have four teaspoons of granulated, four tablespoons, sorry, of granulated sugar. I have one egg for the egg wash that's going to make the bread look really bright really what am I saying bright it's going to make the bread look shiny and very inviting then right here I have a teaspoon of active dry yeast then I have three tablespoons of unsalted butter which I've melted I just melted this in my microwave you could also melt it on the stovetop if you want I have half a teaspoon of salt now these are the simple ingredients you need to make that bread happen so I'm just going to clear my worktop here and then we are going to make some delicious homemade meal bread. So, so good, you guys. Now to a large bowl, I'm going to add my um, one cup of warm water, slightly warm water. Then I'm going to add in the yeast. Then I'm going to add in the sugar because the yeast kind of feeds on the sugar. Then to this, I'm going to add my evaporated milk just shaking it so that i get everything out <laughs> then i'm going to add in my melted butter then i'm just going to <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> a nice stir my salt give this a nice stir then i'm going to gently add in the flour Add half and mix then add the other half this just makes it easy and I discovered that using the wooden spoon to mix um, dough it really makes life easier rather than going in there with my hands right from the very start I'm going to go in there with my hands when the dough is kind of hard uh, not really hard but you know hard. So you just mix everything to form this nice sticky dough. Now you don't want your um, dough for bread to be really very hard because that means the bread is going to be very hard. So it should be slightly sticky. We are going to knead it in a bit but you don't want it too hard even as we knead with the flour. So everything has come together. Then I'm going to generously flour my board going to need I really find the process of kneading bread so so relaxing I don't know it's just one of my favorite things to do <laughs> so we are just going to knead this baby until nice and smooth we'll probably not use all of the flour now look at that looks beautiful slightly sticky but that's perfect because we don't want it so hard i'm 
going to cut this into four equal pieces. So, first of all, cut it into two equal pieces. That's what I've got, so I'm thinking maybe two here. Then you just need to have that plan nearby since this is quite sticky. Then I'm going to cut each piece into two. So that gives us four equal pieces. Okay guys, now that we have our dough all cut into four equal pieces, I'm going to keep the three pieces on the side and then we'll work with the first one. So just make sure your board is nice and well flat. I'm just pressing out the dough with my hand. Then I'm just going to sprinkle a little more flour on top. Then I'm going to roll it out. Just roll it out and try to roll it out white to be white like so it doesn't have to be even or a nice circle or anything because we are going to roll it up anyway like so then i'm just going to roll it up to form a log there we go then we are going to Tuck in the edges just tuck, tuck in those edges so it looks like a nice little loaf then we'll use a sharp knife and just cut about four to five deep lines across diagonal lines you want to make them about half to three quarters of an inch deep so like so actually four lines will be good on this one like so like so if you don't make the lines deep enough they are not going to show when the bread is baked so it's important to make sure those lines are really deep so our first loaf and we're just going to place it on a tray which I just rubbed butter over this tray you could equally use a tray um, lined with parchment paper I'm going to repeat the process with the rest Now I'm just going to turn on my oven just for about two minutes then I'll turn it back off just to make sure that it creates this nice and warm atmosphere for the bread for the loaves to rise. So yeah our four loaves then I've turned off the oven it's just slightly warm now that just ensures that the bread has a warm place to rise if you have a warm place in your house place it there you could cover like with a kitchen towel I love to leave it as it is and just pop it into my warm oven the oven is off remember I just warmed it a little bit so this is going to go in here and I'm going to let that rise for about an hour onto the size of the loaves double I'm going to show you guys what it looks like when it's all risen so our loaves have all reason I have one beaten egg here I'm just going to use that with a brush and brush over the loaves this just helps to make them look really nice and shiny which I really really like okay, I have our oven preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit if you're using degrees Celsius that will be 180 degrees Celsius now that our loaves are all 
um, egg washed I'm going to put them into the oven to bake for about 15 to 20 minutes or until nice and golden brown on the outside our loaves are all done it smells like heaven in here you guys I'm just going to go in and try one uh, so soft it's still hot and the thing with homemade bread is I like eating it hot when it's just fresh out of the oven I mean the taste that at that time is just out of this world mm. 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 so so soft fluffy sweet honestly you don't even need anything to go with this like you could just eat it as a taste no butter needed mm. So, so good you guys I love making my own homemade bread because it is cheaper it is healthier you know exactly what is going into it I mean sometimes I'll take like the um, level of um, whole wheat bread on the store when I look at the amount of ingredients written on it over 20 something ingredients and I'm like for good bread you only need about five to ten ingredients so make your own bread at home and enjoy I hope you guys enjoyed spending time with me for the full recipe go to my blog preciouscore.com if you liked the video give me a thumbs up if you've not subscribed to the channel yet please subscribe and also turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye bye I'm so excited about this recipe because you only need three ingredients three and they are going to give you American biscuits that are fluffy so tasty perfect for breakfast for lunch for dinner they are ridiculously easy to make hi beautiful people my name is precious and you're welcome to my kitchen today I am making American biscuits American biscuits look like scones but they are not exactly scones they have less ingredients than scones they don't include eggs they are so tasty okay let's start cooking the first ingredient is butter not just any butter but good old Kerrygold this butter has amazing flavor I mean other butters just can compare we are using eight tablespoons of butter and I'm using salted butter great cold butter into a large mixing bowl it is important that you take your butter straight from the fridge before grating it because when making biscuits you want to ensure that the butter is nice and cold that ensures a great rice then add self-rising flour I'm using three cups of self-rising flour if you don't have self-rising flour you can simply make yours by combining flour and baking powder rub together the flour and the butter until the mixture looks like bread crumbs you want to make sure that the butter is well incorporated into the flour then measure three quarters of a cup of sprite and add to the mixture and combine now i have to note about the sprite that it gets um, bubbly so when you are measuring the sprite measure it let it settle then add some more because that way you're going to ensure that you have up to three quarters of a cup regardless if you find that your dough is too hard go ahead and add a little bit more sprite to make sure that the dough is nice and soft because that's going to ensure moist biscuits it should be slightly sticky but not so sticky when everything has come together note you're not needing this dough you just want everything to come together flour a working surface place the dough on it and shape that into a rectangle roll it out and then we are going to create layers these layers are going to give the biscuits a nice um nice layers nice layers when you see it just looks nice okay so fold into thirds roll it out again into a rectangles fold into third roll it out into a rectangle repeat the process three times when you've done that three times roll it out into a rectangle and then you cut into 2.5 inch circles I have a biscuit cutter that I got off Amazon that I used to cut but you could just use the rim of a glass or a cup bring the dough together and keep cutting out biscuits until you have completely used up the dough place the biscuits on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper ensuring that they touch each other when biscuits touch each other they help each other to rise up
now the last biscuit is always the ugliest looking one i'm just trying to shape my round biscuit here into something that looks presentable put your biscuits into a 400 degrees fahrenheit preheated oven and let them bake for about 12 minutes until golden brown now if your biscuits don't turn golden brown on top turn on your broiler for one minute so that the biscuits can turn a beautiful golden brown color on top then you take it out you can also brush with melted butter if you like this is just me doing some food blogger work okay taking some pictures for you guys okay 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 i cannot wait to dig in it smells buttery heavenly in here can you believe this takes just about 30 minutes to make from start to finish i mean incredible so look at that uh, I'm going to be eating it with some jam because I don't know biscuits and jam. I just love biscuits with jam. Strawberry jam. Today I'm eating it with apricot jam. You could just smear some butter on it and enjoy. It's good when it's warm and then you rub some butter on it and the butter melts into the biscuit. Oh oh oh. So good. Bon appetit. Mmm. Mmm 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 mmm. Mm. Incredible incredible you guys what would you eat biscuits with leave a comment down below and let me know okay friends that's it for today's video and that's how you make delicious three ingredient homemade biscuits check out my blog preciouscore.com for the full recipe be sure to click on the like button of this video share this video that really helps me out and i'm going to see you guys in the next one bye hi my name is precious and today i'm showing you how to make easy dinner rolls these dinner rolls are so easy they are ready in one hour from start to finish they are soft fluffy and let me just tell you there is nothing like homemade bread i have a can of evaporated milk here and this is a 12 ounce can or 354 ml as it is written on the can and I'm just pouring that milk straight from the can into my mixing bowl to the milk I'm going to add one tablespoon of instant yeast then I'm going to add in three tablespoons of unsalted butter that I've melted I'm going to crack in an egg three tablespoons of sugar one teaspoon of salt I'm going to give this a nice whisk so everything is combined four cups of all purple flour that's one two three and that's four cups of all-purpose flour I'm just going to mix everything together first using a wooden spoon now I'm going to take off this wooden spoon I'm just flouring a clean working surface then I'm going to put my dough here and just know that it's okay if your dough is slightly sticky because that's going to give us really soft rolls so I sprinkled a little bit of flour on my working surface but you don't want to over sprinkle flour because if it turns hard that means you're going to get hard bread and that's not what we are going for here we are going for soft and fluffy okay so I'm just going to just I'm not over kneading this dough because this is a really easy recipe I'm just trying to make bringing it together you see that that's it that's all I'm doing I have a stick of butter here I'm just going to butter a 9 by 13 inch baking dish 
make sure that that butter gets into every corner of that dish buttering the dish generously will prevent the loaves from sticking to the pan so the butter is going to help you to easily get the dinner rolls out of the pan when they are done <laughs> okay now this uh, dough i'm going to cut this dough into 12 equal pieces start by cutting that in half about the same size cut this in two One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yay! Okay. Now take each piece of that dough. Then I'm just going to tuck the dough under around. I don't know how to say this, you guys. <laughs> Help me, but you can see what I'm doing. Okay. I'm trying to form a ball with the dough and I'm just going to roll this into a nice ball and I must say that this is so therapeutic. I find it so relaxing. Look at that, that's our ball. It goes right into the bowl. So guys, I turned on my oven. I'm just going to let it stay on for one minute. After that, I'll turn it off, then I'll put the rolls into the oven. The oven is going to be nice and warm, though it is turned off so that these rolls can rise. I've used this method to proof my bread dough for years and it works every time perfectly. Just make sure that your oven is off and it's not too hot. You just want the oven to be very slightly warm to create a conducive atmosphere for the yeast to do its work. I'll stick this into our warm oven and I'll let that goodness rise until doubled in size. So I just want to reiterate that the oven is off so you guys know that you're not baking the bread yet, you're just using the oven as a warm place to let the dough rise. Mm, our rolls have doubled in size and that took about 30 minutes I'm going to preheat the oven to 350 I have an egg here that I'm going to crack into a bowl I'm brushing the rolls with the beaten egg this is going to make them nice and golden on top and shiny Brushing the rolls with egg like this or the beaten egg that is used to brush bread before baking or any baked goods is called an egg wash. An egg wash just helps your baked goods to look very shiny and more inviting. Our rolls are going into the oven where they are going to bake about 20 minutes or so and dinner rolls will be ready. Mm, it smells so good. <sighs> okay, guys, I just want to show you how soft these loaves are. You can see how soft they are. That's because the dough was slightly sticky. That's really important. So they are not all hard and dry look at how soft oh my god it basically just bounced back up okay going to get oh so hot <laughs> okay let's open it It smells like heaven, bread heaven. Mm, so good. Oh my god. Buttery. 
so soft not overwhelmingly sweet so fluffy I could eat this by itself it doesn't even need anything but I'm going to add some butter mm. this is the truth Thank you friends for spending time with me. For the full recipe, go to my blog, preciouscore.com. Like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, share this video, and I'm going to see you guys in my next one. Bye.